Hi, my name is Antonis and I'm an iconographer and a painter. Today, as I am painting uh, this uh, face of Saint John the Baptist, um, I will try to answer some of the most uh, popular questions uh, that I see in the comments uh, below and um, I'll try to address these issues that many of you um, ask uh, below. So, if you are interested in the technique of uh, egg tempera and um, how this can be applied in iconography or uh, secular painting, stay with me in this video. I will try to explain this uh, as best uh, as I can. Uh, I hope you are well and creative <laughs> and uh, um, as I always say, the best uh, teacher is um, your stay, your practice in the studio. Anyway, um, I will start this uh, question answering uh, uh, with the most common, I believe, question, which uh, uh, is about uh, uh, the brushes that I use in iconography or uh, uh, the painting uh, when I'm using egg tempera. So the brushes I'm using uh, are uh, Kolinsky brushes. Sometimes I use the Da Vinci brand. I really don't want to name any specific brands, but uh, um, I believe it's necessary here. It's not for advertisement purposes. Mm, so I use Kolinsky hair uh, brushes. I, they are very, very uh, beautiful and satisfying to use with uh, egg tempera. They are they hold uh, uh, pigment perfectly for uh, such a long time. And um, here you see me using one of these. It's a Da Vinci brush, but uh, I believe there are uh, many other uh, brands like uh, uh, Raphael, I believe, or uh, uh, Andrei Rublev, if you are in Russia, or um, something like that. Um, I also s often use acryl, um, excuse me, plastic, say, uh, acrylic hair uh, brushes for egg tempera, like the one you see me using now, this blue one. This uh, can be for uh, applying color in uh, broader areas, in larger areas. I don't really care about the, the line work when I'm using these. I'm just using them to fill uh, areas of uh, color and um, uh, these are less expensive. Uh, so um, I also make use of this. I use Kolinsky brushes when I'm uh, uh, painting the facial features, uh, the uh, the lights and the shadows on the face, uh, etc. Now, a very interesting uh, question and useful is uh, if I can use um, Kolinsky brushes when I'm painting uh, with uh, acrylics. Uh, not when I'm painting with egg tempera, but when I'm using a plastic uh, color uh, or even oils. Well, for sure, uh, you can't use, you cannot use Kolinsky when uh, uh, we paint with oils, since uh, oil uh, requires um, uh, a more um, hard uh, uh, hair, a more hard brush in order to to manipulate the color and to move color around. I believe um, we could paint uh, with uh, a Kolinsky brush when we use acrylics as our medium, but the um, acrylics will be hard uh, on uh, the Kolinsky brush. Uh, the hair of Kolinsky is very soft, uh, um, very uh, delicate, I believe, with a nice spring. And I guess that when we are using acrylics, we are not um, uh, using the brush with uh, respect. Now, a very similar question to that is um, what kind of uh, gesso I'm using when I'm uh, painting with uh, egg tempera and what kind of gesso I'm using when I'm painting uh, with uh, acrylic uh, and uh, if this changes when I'm using uh, canvas uh, uh, or a board, a, a wood board. So I would say that when I'm using uh, egg tempera, I almost always um, 
paint on a hard surface as uh, uh, a wood panel or uh, a wood board. I never use canvas when I'm painting with uh, egg tempera. I believe that uh, tempera needs a very um, a steady surface to be painted on and uh, that's that. So um, make sure whenever you use canvas you have to use either uh, acrylics as your medium or um, oil painting. Now, um, the gesso I'm using uh, when I'm uh, preparing my uh, sur surface, uh, it can be either acrylic or uh, it can be with uh, rabbit skin glue. That means that I use for both cases the same, uh, uh, let's say, powder, uh, uh, calcium carbonate uh, powder um, and uh, the difference is the glue that I am uh, dissolving this powder into. Uh, when I am using egg tempera for sure I will have to use a gesso that is prepared with uh, rabbit skin glue. I cannot use egg tempera on an acrylic uh, gesso. And when I'm, I'm about to paint with uh, uh, acrylics, then I will make sure that the gesso I'm painting on is prepared with um, um, is prepared with acrylics. So it's uh, nice to respect the materials, to respect the um, the organic na nature of uh, egg tempera, <clears throat> and use uh, uh, rabbit skin glue. And when we use acrylic uh, uh, color to paint, uh, to use. Uh, uh, before that, an acrylic gesso to prepare our uh, surface. So, I hope this clarifies uh, uh, things about uh, gessos. It seems that uh, many students are uh, completely confused in that uh, area, and um, I hope this gives uh, uh, a clear answer on uh, that. Hi, I'm Antonis, and I'm proud to present you my online course in iconography. Paint an icon with me. This course will help you become a better iconographer and it will help you be more confident when talking and presenting your artwork. It will make you understand in depth the studio practices of a professional iconographer like me and you will get accustomed to what great iconography looks like. So learn in a simple and organized way everything you need about the materials, mediums and techniques in order to make a beautiful icon. Paint with me the icon of Christ and learn how to paint better any icon you wish. I will see you at the studio. Now, <clears throat> I received a very interesting uh, also question about uh, um, if somebody um, can uh, paint with acrylics and have the same results uh, as in egg tempera. Uh, people seem to, to enjoy the results, uh, to enjoy what they see in uh, the videos I present. Uh, uh, where I paint uh, mostly with uh, egg tempera or oil uh, and they ask if uh, they can <laughs> if they are doomed uh, those of them who paint just with uh, acrylic well the answer is that um, for sure you can uh, achieve very very similar results to egg tempera when, we, when you use acrylic uh, sometimes it's impossible to see the difference between acrylics and uh, egg tempera. The thing is though that um, egg tempera can achieve vo more subtle uh, results, more subtle um, combinations and layers of uh, color with very very thin, very beautiful glazes that you know that they will withstand the, um, the test of time. Uh, we know that because we have icons that they are more than a thousand years old and um, so we know that uh, egg tempera can stay perfectly if um, will be properly um, stored um, and uh, more than that uh, Egg tempera is very, very, very smooth and silky to use, very satisfying to use. Uh, 
um it's uh, <laughs> really you have to try it by yourselves and see how satisfying it is when you are a little bit familiar with uh, the medium yes it has um, um, it takes some time to uh, familiarize yourselves with uh, the pigments and uh, um, the the egg tempera and how the um, the ratio is to dissolve the pigments all that stuff it It might be a little bit uh, um, strange for those of you that have never used dry pigments as uh, your medium before and egg tempera but uh, when you familiarize with the medium really it's so smooth and silky and beautiful that uh, um, I don't see a reason why somebody should paint with uh, acrylics well of course acrylics um, can behave in um, uh, in a much different uh, way um, than uh, egg tempera. It can be used with uh, uh, impasto in more thick uh, brush strokes. So it can be used almost uh, as uh, oil. But um, if you want to achieve similar results to egg tempera, for sure you can with acrylics. Acrylic, as I said, is a medium that can be used in many, many ways. Uh, but uh, it definitely is not as rewarding and satisfying uh, as uh, egg tempera uh, is. Now, another question that I have is uh, about uh, uh, the vinegar I use in uh, the egg tempera solution. Uh, as I say in one of my other videos, I give the recipe for the egg tempera solution. That is the solution with which uh, we dissolve the dry pigments, the powder pigments. And uh, the recipe is simple, is one part of uh, yolk, uh, egg um, yolk, uh, one part of uh, water, and uh, some drops of uh, vinegar. Uh, here, as you know, I live in uh, beautiful Crete, Greece, and um, we have uh, amazing uh, uh, grape uh, vinegar here, so I just use uh, that. I don't really know how strong uh, uh, this vinegar is. <laughs> it seems pretty strong when used in a salad, but um, the point of the vinegar when used in the egg tempera solution is to prevent you know the bacteria from forming too quickly uh, occasionally they will form and they will uh, um, they will uh, uh, make the egg tempera solution to be useless uh, but um, the point of the vinegar is to delay this uh, um, bacteria to form and uh, as much as uh, possible that happens um, that doesn't happen before a week uh, let's say and uh, that's that now it depends uh, you can use uh, a regular vinegar I believe for salad <laughs> and it will do the job. Sometimes uh, you can skip the vinegar if uh, you know that uh, you will use your egg tempera solution quickly in a couple of days. You don't even have to use uh, vinegar. So I hope this uh, answers the question about the egg tempera solution. Uh, another question is uh, if somebody can paint uh, um, on top of egg tempera with uh, oil um, or uh, acrylic. I believe I would I would not mix uh, egg tempera with acrylic um, in no form. I wouldn't paint a layer of egg tempera and then on top of that uh, with acrylics. Uh, for sure I wouldn't paint uh, acrylics and on top of that uh, with egg tempera. I wouldn't mix those two together. You can mix though uh, egg tempera with uh, oil either in the solution. I have a video on that. Uh, or the, you can paint on top uh, of uh, egg tempera layers. You can paint uh, with uh, oil. Uh, you can use oil on the top layers of the painting. I mean, you cannot. You can definitely cannot do the the opposite. You can use uh, tempera, egg tempera, on top of uh, oil uh, layers. It doesn't work like, like that, and uh, the result uh, um, will not be great. So another uh, um, 
Another uh, interesting question is about, uh, and slightly different, it's not about egg tempera here and uh, the technique of it, but uh, about uh, more about iconography. Um, somebody asks me if uh, it's really necessary such a lot, uh, um, such a degree of measuring when we are making the drawing, when we are drawing a face, uh, etc. Uh, I believe that, uh, yes, we have to, um, at the beginning, to copy um, uh, all the icons and uh, we will uh, learn from uh, copying and studying these uh, old icons. And the best way for me to study them is to just print uh, a copy of that uh, old icon and try to, uh, to copiously um, and in detail uh, uh, copy this icon on your uh, paper. Uh, the way to do that, I believe, uh, is uh, especially when you are a student and you don't have a lot of experience, uh, your eye is not trained in um, the forms of uh, uh, what you are about to copy. The best way, if, in my opinion, is the grid method or the method with uh, the compass. This way you will know that uh, your uh, uh, drawing is uh, correct. You will know that uh, you are um, stepping uh, on... Um, you will be relaxed that uh, your drawing is not something completely off. And uh, this way uh, you will move uh, safely. Um, I know that uh, uh, some some teachers uh, like to give uh, uh, recipes that uh, okay the head is uh, for uh, uh, noses in length uh, and all that stuff. Yes, I know this, and uh, you can draw a sphere or uh, an oval and then divide this oval and then you will find the eyes and stuff. But I believe that this is too uh, vague in my opinion. It's nice to uh, to be more specific, especially at the beginning. And uh, the grid method, uh, as uh, I teach it in one of my videos, in the compass method, uh, work very, very nice. Now, if uh, you like, you can also uh, check my my course in iconography on Teachable. That is a bunch of uh, 25 videos for people who are um, experienced and, and both for students who would like to now begin their uh, journey in iconography. Uh, I will have a link below in the description if... Uh, um, you are interested in uh, that uh, course, uh, you can check uh, it on Teachable. Um, later on, when uh, you will be more uh, um, fluent, let's say, in painting, in the medium of uh, egg tempera, your materials and your techniques, then uh, drawing something will be much more easy. And um, having a very good uh, foundation in drawing, as the one that uh, uh, the compass method gives you, um, then you can gradually start uh, training your eye in the human proportions and uh, uh, this will also help you to, um, to be able to make your own, uh, your own um, compositions uh, later on or to correct uh, uh, something that is missing from an old icon, etc. <laughs> I hope that, this is something that I always say in many videos, I hope some of the things make sense uh, to you. Sometimes I get carried away and uh, um, I forget that uh, many of you um, really are at the beginning of your journey in iconography and um, that's something I have to keep remembering when I'm uh, uh, voicing over these uh, videos. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have uh, um, any anything you need me to clarify further on uh, on this um, video. Now, 
one more uh, question I would like to to answer here that many people ask me is um, uh, which icons to study when they are at the beginning of uh, um, learning iconography. I would say it's good if you study um, old icons like uh, find icons of the masters like uh, Theophanes of Crete, uh, Agilos Acotandos, Andreas Rizzos. Uh, try to find these uh, old icons and uh, study them. Um, sometimes though it's good at the beginning um, because um, these icons are great and I strongly advise my students uh, to work uh, and study these old icons but um, I also uh, believe that at the beginning uh, students is also good to study um, a contemporary icon, how one uh, contemporary iconographer has painted an icon, just because uh, they can find um, uh, very more detailed uh, photographs of that icon uh, and they can understand uh, the process of uh, the iconographer. It's better to understand a contemporary icon and the way it's painted than an old icon. But uh, um, f for sure, for drawing, I would say that somebody should study um, the old uh, icons. And uh, of course, museums are the best uh, teachers uh, where you can find these old icons. Uh, my best advice is to... Um, if you live uh, close by to a museum where there are uh, great uh, icons, I would, stay, I would say... Um, just find an icon that uh, is there in a museum and uh, uh, paint the icon before you visit the museum. Paint that uh, icon, print the image and paint the icon and then uh, visit the museum uh, with your icon in your hands and try to do some uh, comparison there in front of the icon, of the original icon and uh, try to do a comparison and see what colors uh, you used, uh, what color is the actual uh, icon um, and uh, also take uh, notes with you, take uh, a notebook with you and write down everything uh, uh, that you understand from this uh, comparison. So anyway, I hope that uh, this video answered some questions uh, that you might uh, have. Um, I will also post the full version of uh, uh, this video uh, on my Patreon page. And uh, I want to thank all you, all my patrons, for helping the production of this video. If you want to see um, in slow in the actual um, uh, motion this video and how I painted this head of uh, Saint John the Baptist, please um, feel free to support these videos on uh, Patreon. Thank you so much, stay healthy, stay creative, um, be happy and I will see you soon in another video. Bye.